in someone's bloody garden. <laughs> So I guess inevitably, um, when you um, are around hunts for you know a lot of the time, inevitably at some point you are going to witness uh, a kill, um, both for myself. Um, speaking personally, I've seen. Um, quite a lot. You know, as much as we do try and obviously help as many as we can, it is inevitable that we're not going to be able to. Out of all the fox kills, they are obviously um, all upsetting, all traumatic, um, but I guess one that particularly stood out for me was uh, when um, I used to uh, sab the lebri hunt um, and there used to be a small group of us that used to do the lebri. I was with the driver and we could hear, we, it was a, I think it was a wet, it was been raining I think and I remember that um, we could uh, sort of see and hear the hounds in cry. I think if we go, should we go around just a little bit more? Yeah. To where he's on point. And we drove round to where they were heading and as we approached, we approached some houses. As I got out, I could see that the hounds were in someone's garden and the garden had quite a high wall, um, which for me, I always think walls, they get trapped and they inevitably get killed because they, they run in, they can't get out, they're too tired, they can't jump, they get trapped, so like sheds. Uh, gardens, stables, anywhere like that, I can see that there's a potential for it to be trapped. God, in someone's bloody garden! And as I sort of ran up to the garden, to the gate, I could see the hounds in the, in the garden, in the corner, as I've said, by the wall and obviously I could see them tearing and ripping at something and obviously as I got ran in I could see that, that yeah they had a fox and obviously had just got hold of it. I could hear them tearing at it, I could hear them crunching at it and I remember the face just looked um, but the eyes that were still there just just it just looked as if it was it, it had been it was just in terror yeah i got upset um it was a horrendous thing to see um and i uh, remember trying to get it off them 
The person that was with me in the vehicle ran up and she started sort of sort of commanding at the hounds to, to let it go. And then there was a hunt supporter just stood there watching, but he was like proper getting off on it. He was like proper grinning, proper loving what he was seeing. Behind us, for the record. And yeah, um, not something you forget really. Probably my most memorable fox girl was at the Aviston Hunts. He's crossed. There must have been at least two foxes about us on that day because just literally as we'd got there, the first fox ran out away from the hunt and across the road so we, we had time to help save that fox. Van, we have a situation on the road of New Road. We, okay, copy that. Mm. Copy that, we just need to deal with something but let us know what's happening. Over. Uh, so we'd literally, we just managed to help one fox got away safely and within minutes the hounds were chasing the second fox. The huntsmen and the hunts they came on the road and they they charged up the road after the hounds. So we got in our vehicle, drove up the hill to try and catch up with them and that's when we saw the hounds like huddled together under the driveway. Uh, when you see the hounds like that, it, it, that's usually what a fox girl looks like. They're interested, they're interested. They're interested. He's filming. They're in someone's bloody garden. I swear, someone's still in killing these! Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh. My first instinct was just to get out of the car as quickly as I could, and I just ran straight over to where the hounds were. I saw the fox, which the, the hounds were tearing into it. Uh, and I just reached down, grabbed it, picked it up. Oh my god! 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 Get off! 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 But the, the hounds were so rabid, they were jumping up and biting the fox as I was walking away with it so it was it was quite a struggle to get the fox away from the hounds. Uh, once I had got the fox safely away from the hounds I ran around the side of the vehicle, got in the vehicle with it Whilst we were in the car with the fox, that we realised the fox was still alive. It was, there was still uh, a faint heartbeat. So we, we pulled over uh, and we tried to keep the fox alive. It's still alive! Oh, fucking hell. I need warmth, I need quiet. 
I need a coat. I need a coat. Okay, so. Get it to me. It's alive. It's alive. So I call the other staff to tell them we've got a live fox in the van. It's alive. But unfortunately, the, the fox ended up dying in uh, the arms of one of our subs. No matter how many times you do see a fox killed, it, it's always upsetting. Uh, and I guess with this, this particular case, the fact that it was still alive made it a bit worse. Uh, in the end, I guess it just it makes you more determined to carry on and carry on stopping fox hunting. Really, it it, it serves as a reminder as to, as to why you're you're doing what you're doing. It it serves as a reminder as to why hunt saboteurs are still needed. That the fact that foxes are still being killed on a regular basis.